train? Like, like a really weird big train? You can reach doorknobs? How does this door work? Are, are you like a real robot? Are there other people on here? Is this what trains are like? Yes. Yes to what? Which? For years, we have been patiently waiting for Infinity Train to transform from a short that Cartoon Network released into a full fleshed out series. So was it good? Was it not good? Let's go through this, starting right now. Also plug in my Discord. <laughs> The episode starts off very somber and calm, showing a lot of yellows in the barren state of Wisconsin. We get to our main character, Tulip, and her friend Michaela, talking about how excited Tulip is to go to Oshkosh Game Design Camp. The show has a lot of backgrounds that look painted, with very little, if any, outlines contrasted against the well-defined outline and animated characters you see on the screen. What I appreciate about these opening scenes is that they don't spare any time, getting right into the information you need, at least to know for the episode, or info that you would benefit from if you dive into the series fully. I love the voice direction for Tulip. Her slightly lower than average, relaxed, sort of gruffy voice matches her quite angsty personality. They stop right outside Tulip's house and drop a very big hint. I guess it's weird to see your parents talking to each other now. What do you mean weird? Well, cause you know, they're not married anymore and everything is different. It's fine. Lots of people's parents are divorced. Tulip's parents are divorced. Now, Tulip is old enough to know a lot of the implications of the divorce. And like many children, it hits her hard. It's a very interesting move for the first episode to drop something like this. But Infinity Train has so much hype that for any other show, it would be at most a lucky risk. I enjoy how Michaela is blissfully unaware of how Tulip would not take talking about the divorce so casually. Not because it's funny, but because it's realistic. I wouldn't expect children to handle the subject with tact and care when it comes to something as sensitive as that. So Tula buries herself in her room, and an introvert in me can vouch that that's a relatable thing to do. The important part here is that she storms past her mom, who is on the phone with Tulip's dad. I like how when alone, we get to see her with their metaphorical shell taken off. She's coding, hunched over a computer, and doesn't want to socialize with a single soul other than herself. We'll see that Tulip works by herself as a character, which you think many main characters do, but I'm sure you can think of a few shows in which if the main character was by themselves for too long, it would not work. So it's time to break even more bad news. Tulip is not going to game development camp like she was promised. You said if I brought my grade up in English, I could go. You, you, you and dad signed a contract and everything. What, so you're both too busy to be my parents? Hey, you guys are the ones whose divorce keeps messing everything up, not me. And your dad and I are still trying to figure this out. I know, we're not very good at it yet. It's two of you and one kid. It's not that hard. <laughs> So I tweeted about this scene on Twitter, got a lot of traction with mostly positive reception. The first time I watched this, it was at this point that the episode had my full attention. With conversations like this, it's not afraid to go there. And again, it's such a bold move to have this being in the first episode. Can we talk about how not happy this episode is? In a sea full of very happy-go-lucky shows, sometimes the bright and colorful sky can be concerningly dull. What may be interested in Infinity Train is even though it's from the same camp, it doesn't follow the character archetype that Adora Bat, KO Steven, and Finn and many others follow. Tulip is not happy. Tulip does not want to save the world. Tulip wants to become a game developer in Wisconsin, and it's perfectly okay. To some, it may be worrying to see this show go into such deep topic for a network that targets children. However, to have one and only one show so far doing it, and doing it this transparently, and not be bright and happy about it on this network, that's completely okay. There's tons of wacky shows on Cartoon Network that isn't going to become dark anytime soon, hopefully. I also just love how her mother is trying everything in her power, but it's clear that Tula being the only kid is very telling that she's new to being a mother and having to be mindful of someone else. Tulip storms back in her room and she has a wild idea. She's not missing game camp and nothing will stop her. The backstory to her character was done amazingly, and I don't know that many shows from episode 1 that have been this great that it hooked me in like this. I feel like I know her character and it's only been one half of one episode. I love how barren everything is in the episode, it feels full and professional. So Tulip walks to camp, showing that naive childlike side that she still has, even though she doesn't outwardly portray it often. On the journey here, she sees a train, seeing that it's going exactly to the part of Wisconsin that she needs to get to, and with no second thought, she gets gets on. Don't do this, please. 
Fortunately for her, she doesn't die immediately, however, she is now in the snow for some odd reason. Are you my mom? Well, what? What? Am I what? Are you my mom? No! So you've come to bring me the sweet release of death. Also, no? From here we meet One One, a spherical robot that portrays an optimistic and pessimistic side. He offered a lot of the comedy in the short, so I'd imagine that he's the comic relief here, which is so needed in a serious cartoon like this. Another part of the episode I really enjoyed was that they didn't drop Tulit's parents after she mysteriously got transported onto this train. They do bring it up more, and it's clear to see that Tulip is not happy any time either of them is brought up. Speaking of the short, we get to see more of the cars in the train, which from speculation seems to be one of the strong selling points of the show. Seeing these different train cars, and seeing how they incorporate a potentially infinite world scenario into connected storylines, or basically what season 2 of Wanda Over Yonder did, but incredibly less wacky, and incredibly more dark. My concern would be that these cars would take somewhat of a gimmicky role, which it's already a gimmick in a sense, but what I truly mean is that it loses its meaning and would only be used as a cheap way to keep things interesting. So far it hasn't, but it's only episode 1. She explores the next room, which will come into play later, but the more interesting find is here. Divorce and death? Alright, I see you, Infinity Train. That vortex seems to look after specific bodies, and if you think about something that happens in this car, it seems to be a possible correlation. So in this previous car, she takes off her gloves, which is doubled as a way to be realistic in the cold walks of the northern United States, but also a cool way to reveal the number on her hand. Could it be that the number and the vortex are related? Well, there's only one way to find out. Do you know what Wisconsin looks like? All right, hold on, let me think. I want to say it looks like this. No, this is not Wisconsin. I love One One's character. I really hope that doesn't get old. So Tulip runs out, thinking that maybe if she runs off the frame, she'll be safe because the animators haven't drawn out that section yet. Unfortunately for her, she attracts these really disgusting beings. The design of these beings are disgusting, vile, and I'd wage war on these things, even if they were the size of a bottle cap. I love them. In fact, I love everyone's designs. Their realistic leaning proportions and design, it gives me regular show vibes. As many shows recently have been leaning towards a more cartoony proportion, Portion scale. They give Tulip chase and introduce the one thing that anyone who dislikes bugs dislikes more than anything else, their ability to fly. So yes, these things go after Tulip, showing why she can't just quote, get off the train. It's clear that she would most likely die. And it's probably best to see where the train is going, or at least what's going on, before venturing into an area she knows nothing about. And I also want to make this clear, she wants to get off the train and go home. She did not start off the show wanting to save the world, she does not want to save the train, she wants to get off. She wants to go back to Wisconsin and be a game developer. That's such a breath of fresh air in animation, I mean, you wouldn't even believe it if I'm telling you. This leads into her getting into a pretty creative little fight with one of the monsters, which shows itself to, well... <laughs> Also not be natural, and for a dialogue heavy show, these age monsters, and her hand and the number of the trains and the synthesized and arpeggiated beats, heck even the name of the side character, there's a lot of numbers and sequences that this episode displays. She ends up defeating the monster with a very clever way of showing us that one one can split up, and luckily she's saved. this train. So, you know that feeling you get when you see a character and relate to their struggles? The feeling you get where you want to follow the main character on their journey, and you want to explore the areas that they're going through, and you want them to win the battle that they're having? That was me. This episode legitimately had me wanting more when it ended. It's a harsh cut ending. There's no zooming out, no fade away, there's no calm end, it just cuts to the credits. I was looking for the next scene. I wasn't even looking to see if the episode ended. That was it. I've never felt so engaged with an episode since Final Space, which came out a year ago. And the mistake that I regret even to this day is that I was not covering it, and I wasn't giving it the flowers while it was still airing new season 1 episodes. 
I won't make that mistake again with Infinity Train. This episode is not like it's short. It's a lot more fleshed out and polished and serious. When a short planted the seeds in our heads for the mystery somewhat science fantasy serious music influence project, this episode validates our hype. So if you want to see where this show started, here's the video of me talking about the short. And if you want to see my other Did This Start Off Well videos, click here. Special thanks to the patrons of August. And until next time, take care. Alpha out.